Okay, in this video I'm just going to demonstrate a full project from start to finish and that's going to be how to create a ruler that could be manufactured on a laser engraver. And I'm going to start my design in Onshape, the cloud-based CAD software because it's excellent for doing measurements and increments and line drawings even though that most people think it can only be used for 3D modeling you can actually create a vector scale 2D drawing as well. And then I'm going to finish the design up in grab it to add a little bit of a, a graphic design touch to it and prepare it to be made on the laser engraver. So I'm signed into Onshape and I'm going to go ahead and click create document and I'm going to call this the six inch ruler. I could make a um, full size ruler but the, what I'm showing would work for either one. I'm just going to demonstrate and create a six inch ruler in this video here. So first thing is we have to create a new sketch on our top work plane. So I selected the top work plane. I click new sketch. I'm just going to call this ruler. Change my view to the top view. Grab my rectangle tool and this ruler is going to be uh, one by six. So I'm just going to click once and then type in one. Uh, let's just click here. So we want to make it six inches long by one inch tall. So we have a one by six. Uh, box rectangle ready to go. Then we're going to start with our increment lines and on one side it's going to measure inches on the other it's going to measure uh, centimeters. So I'm just going to zoom in here and I'm going to create one increment line and I'm just going to make it uh, 0.1 inches tall. So I have this one inch line here drawn on my end of my ruler. And I'm going to use the linear pattern tool to go ahead and repeat that the entire length. And these are going to be my 16th inch uh, tick marks. So we want them to be a 16th apart. So it's 0 0.0625. And there are 96 16th inch marks. So I just typed in 96 time for the repetition. Uh, that's going to be the, uh, the 96x. And now I just have to double click to confirm. So if I zoom out, you can see we have... 16th inch lines the whole way down. Okay, and each uh, increment value is a different length depending on the measurement. So for example, a 16th inch line is not as long as a eighth inch line or a quarter or a half or so forth. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my quarter, my first eighth inch line, which is this one right here. It'd be the second line in. Um, so we're going to go ahead and extend that I'm going to extend it by 0.1 and now I'm going to step and repeat that. So I'm going to click on this extension. Instead of being a 16th inch apart it's now uh, an eighth inch apart so it's 0.125 and there are 48 eighth inch lines. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat that. So now we have our eighth inch increments. Then we're going to do our quarter inch increments. So we're going to count four lines in. One, two, three, four. We're going to extend this line by 0.1. And I'm going to step and repeat this line. The distance between is now going to be a quarter between, so it's going to be 0.25 apart. And there's going to be 24. Double click. It's coming along. And then we're going to do our half inch. So we're going to go, let's find it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's go ahead and extend this, 0.1, and this 0.1 is just a, a number I made up. There's no, um, you could do less or more. And we're going to repeat this. This is now half inch apart, so 0.5 apart. And there's going to be 12 of these. And then the last thing we need to do is our inch increment. So let's count a full 16 in. So let's see here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Here is our first inch. So we're just going to go ahead and grab our line tool, extend this down, 0.1, and then step and repeat that. So that's going to be an inch apart, and we need six. Okay, so there are our tick marks. Now, we have drawn lines 
on the actual ends of the ruler here. And when you laser cut something, you do not want any repeating lines. So I'm just going to grab my scissors tool. I'm going to cut away our very first 16th inch line. And then I'm going to come on over here and I'm going to cut away these lines as well on the end here. So again, there are no uh, repeating or overlapping lines. Okay. Then let's go ahead and add the tick marks on the bottom side. Now the bottom is going to measure centimeters. So we're going to do a very similar process, but it's going to be a little bit easier. So I'm going to go ahead and draw one line. So let's just do 0.1 again for the height. And we're going to step and repeat this line. This is going to be our millimeter tick mark. So it's going to be a millimeter part, which is 0 0.039 inches, is one millimeter. And let's see how many uh, millimeters is going to be in a six inch ruler. If we just do what? Six uh, divided by 0 0.039, 153 ish. So we'll repeat this. 154 times, which apparently you can't do. Let's just do 100 times. Oops, I pushed the wrong button, pushed the wrong button. Let's try that again. So we have our, let's see, 0.1 inch line. Okay, step and repeat. It's gonna be point, 0 0.039 inches apart and we're gonna repeat that 100 times. Double click to confirm. Let's see. Didn't quite make it. So we're going to go ahead and repeat again. So I'm going to click here. Distance between 0 0.039. How many more do we need? Let's just do 54. And double click to confirm. Oops. Didn't quite make it again. Pattern tool 0 0.039. And we need three more. Perfect. I'm just going to trim off this last one. Okay. And then what we have to do is we just have to add our uh, half centimeter and centimeter tick marks. So very similar method. Uh, let me delete this guy on the end here as well. So first thing we do is just going to count five in. So one, two, three, four, five, right? One, two, three, four, five. We're going to tack on, and I'm just running out of time here, so I'm just going to do 0.05 for my extension, 0.05. And we are now going to repeat this. Uh, let's see, it'll be 0 0.39 times five apart, right? Uh, so I'm just going to copy that part and that should have worked. So one, two, three, four, five. Perfect. And I don't know how many I need. I'm just going to say 100 and confirm. Went a little too far, but that's all right. I'll clean that up in a minute. And then we have to do our centimeters, which again, I'm just going to extend slightly farther. So we'll extend that by 0 0.05. Let's see. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. So we're looking at roughly 1, 2, 3, 3 and a half centimeters per inch. So we're just going to go ahead and step and repeat this guy. It's going to be 0.39 apart. And we're going to have, let's see if it's going to be 3.5 times 6. We're going to repeat that 21 times. And that should be kind of close. I'm just going to go to the end here. And we have quite a few lines to clean up. So let's just trim. All of these lines we don't need. Let's see if I can select more than one. There we go. Perfect. So now we have all of our tick marks. And at this point, I could go ahead and I could use um, on shapes text tool to go ahead and add uh, my name or the one inch marks.
but there's only a few fonts to pick from in Onshape. So I'm just going to draw a text box to show you. So you have just a few fonts to pick from, um, but instead I want to add a, a special touch with my graphic design software, Gravit. So the next step, if I want to go ahead and edit this ruler in Gravit, would be to download the sketch that I have created. Now, Onshape does export a vector format in the format of either a DWG or DXF. Unfortunately, Gravit does not uh, read that format. However, that can be converted uh, using a high-end graphic design software, which I would do for you if you'd be interested in doing this. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click on the ruler sketch over here. I'm going to click Export, select DXF, and then I'm just going to rename this to uh, Erdreich Ruler, not change anything else, and then go ahead and click Export. And that went ahead and that downloaded the DXF file that could then be opened up in a software that would convert this for you. Um, after converting it to an SVG file, which again uh, would be done on either a Mac in the Mac Lab or by the teacher, you would go ahead and open up the Gravit Design software. I'm going to create a new document, 24 by 12 inches, uh, just because that's the ruler document size. And then I'm going to import that converted vector file by clicking Import, Place Image, and then selecting the SVG file. And here is my ruler that I've created. Now there's a few things that need to be done to actually prepare this uh, for the laser. So first thing is we have to actually change the line color. So the laser responds to colors. Red means it's going to cut all the way through. Blue means it's going to etch, kind of like a perforation. Uh, and black is actually like an engraving fill. So these tick marks need to be blue. The cut the outer box needs to be red, and it's not any red, it's actually a specific swatch. So if I, for example, were just to select this entire ruler here, um, I'm actually going to first uh, ungroup it. So I'm just going to, let's see, double click, so that way I can see all my lines. And then I'm going to select everything um, using my open arrow tool. Then right here for my borders, I'm going to select my blue swatch. And if you don't have this blue swatch, it is available on my website. So if I were to just go to my teacher web page um, under the resources tab, you can actually see that these swatches can be downloaded for Gravit underneath the multimedia design selection and underneath the template. So here are the color swatches that I'm referring to. You could also create them yourself in Gravit, um, but those are the actual swatches that you can import using uh, this button here. So I made all the tick marks blue. Then I'm just going to individually select the outer perimeter. So I'm just holding shift to select all the outer perimeter lines and I'm gonna make those red. So now we have a red outer line with blue tick marks. Now I'm going to use the text box tool to go ahead and create my increment. So I'm just going to type in the number 1, uh, select a font that I like. And this is really the advantage of taking it into Gravit. You don't have to take it into Gravit. You can finish this. Um, but using the, the text box tool in Gravit, which is a full graphic design software, is much, much easier than trying to use the text box tool in, say, on shape. So all I'm doing now is I made one box, and I just copied and pasted it, and I'm just sliding it uh, in the exact same spot to each one-inch tank mark here. So I'm just using my arrow keys to perfectly slide it over horizontally so it's not uh, moving up and down. So that way they're all still aligned here. And let's just do one more. I'm sorry, two more. And if I wanted to, I could go ahead and actually add the fractional increments as well. So I could put the, the 16th, 8th, 8th inch, or half inch. Um, you can go ahead and do that. It's the same process. I would just change your font size to something a little bit, uh, a little bit smaller. Um, I'm not going to for this video. I'm just going to do the main increments here like so. Um, I'm actually going to shift all these over slightly because they're touching the lines just a little bit. And it's important that your, your words that you're going to engrave are actually the swatch of black, black fill, um, no border. So we actually there, now we have that, and then I actually, just to make sure everything is aligned, I'm going to go ahead and use my align tool there to square everything up. Then I'm going to do the same thing for centimeters here. So again, just copy and paste this one more time. I'm going to make the font size much smaller. And let's just go ahead and drag this in for one centimeter, 
two, and so forth. Okay, and then the last thing we need to do is just actually label what we are measuring by. So I'm just going to grab one of these text boxes and pull it over here, and we're just going to go ahead and type in centimeters Actually, I'm just going to put CM So IN CM and put that in place just to show what the increments are of. Last touch, I'm going to go ahead and add my name. So grab another text box. And I can really put this anywhere. I'm going to change the font to a nice script font here. Step the font size down a little bit. And let's see, I'll put it over here. At the end. Okay. And that would be a complete project. The last thing I need to do is just go ahead and save it. So we're actually going to first save it as a Gravit file in case I want to come back in. So I can call it Erdreich Ruler in case I need to come back in and edit it or make a change. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to update that SG, SVG file. So I'm going to hit Export, Export as an SVG. Um, and that's going to be, oops, not an SVG, Z. We're going to export as just a regular SVG. Um, and again, I'm just going to replace this Erdreich ruler, override that, so now it has all the saved colors in it here. So this can actually now go ahead and be manufactured on the laser engraver. The cut settings as far as material thickness and whether you're cutting through wood or anodized aluminum or whatever it is, is all done actually on the machine. So this is now ready to go.